Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about structs in C. Now, a struct is a data structure where we can store uh, groups of data types. So inside of a struct, I could store like an integer alongside of a string, alongside a character, alongside a double. I could store all these different data types in one single data structure. And there's tons of uses for structs. And one of the things we can do with them is model real world entities. So I could basically like model uh, something in the real world inside of my program. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in this tutorial. We're gonna be looking at how we can use a struct to represent a student inside of our program. So imagine we were writing a piece of software that was using like students. So it was like storing records of students or something. I could use a struct to represent a student in my program. So over here in my program, I'm just gonna come up here above the main method and I'm actually gonna create a struct. And you guys will see like how these work and, and how we can use them. So I'm just gonna say struct and over here, I'm gonna give this a name. So I'm gonna call this student. And a lot of times in C when we're making structs, you're gonna give them a, a capital letter just like that. And I'm gonna make an open and closed curly bracket. Now, inside of this struct, I can start specifying what types of data are gonna make up a student in my program. So basically I can define like different attributes of a student and place them in here. And this will kind of act as a template and you'll see how we can use this later. So let's think about different attributes of a student. Well, one thing would be like the student's name. So I could say char name, and I'm gonna make this a array of characters. So this is gonna represent the name. And actually, why don't we give this a number? So I'm gonna say 50. So this um, string can hold 50 characters maximum. And now we're gonna make another one for major. So we're gonna to wanna to store the student's major. And again, we'll make this 50. I also wanna make an integer for the student's age and a double for the student's GPA. So I have this struct student and in here I have a bunch of attributes of a student, right? I have like the student's name, their major, uh, an integer that stores their age and a double for their GPA. Essentially what I did was I created like a type of student data type. So I basically am allowing myself now to represent a student inside of my program. So let's come down here to this main method and I'll show you guys how we can use this. So I can basically create an instance of this student structure. So I can create like an actual student inside of my program. And the way that I do that is just by saying struct and I wanna type out the name of the struct that I wanna make. In our case, it's gonna be a student and I wanna give this a name. So I'm just gonna call it student one. And I can just use a semicolon here Basically what I did now was I created a container called student one that's gonna be able to store a name, a major, an age, and a GPA. So if you're familiar with arrays in C, you'll know an array is a special structure that can hold multiple pieces of information, but all of the pieces of information inside of an array need to be of the same data type. And also they don't have names. With a struct, I can have a bunch of different data types like this. And I can also give them names like name, major, age, and GPA. So now let me show you guys how we can assign some values to these. So for this particular student, student one, I can give them a name. I can give them a major, a GPA, and an age. So I could say student one dot age, and I can set this equal to something. So I could say, let's say student one's age is 22. So basically inside of this student one container, I'm saying the age of this particular student is gonna be 22. I can do the same for the GPA. So I can say student.gpa is equal to, maybe they have a 3.2. So I'm saying this particular student's GPA is a 3.2. I can also do the same thing for those strings. So for the name and the major. Now, here's the thing about working with strings. Remember in C, a string is actually just an array of characters. And when we have an array, we can't like give it a particular value. So for example, if I wanted to give this student's name a value, this is just an array of characters. So I can't just come down here and say student.name is equal to something. That's not gonna work because you can't do that with an array. I can use something called the string copy function. And this is a function that will take a string and it'll give it a value that we specify. So it'll basically do what we wanna do, like what we did over here 
with the age and the GPA, but with the name. So I could say like STR CPY, and inside of here, I need to pass this two parameters. The first thing I wanna pass is the destination for the string. So we're gonna pass in student1.name. The second thing I wanna pass in is the string that I want to store inside of student1.name. So in our case, let's just name it him Jim. So now we have the student1.names value is equal to Jim, and I can do the same thing for major. So I'm just gonna copy this and we'll come down here and I could say student1.major and we're gonna set this equal to business. So let's say Jim is a business major. Essentially what I've done here is I've created a student and that student had all the attributes that we defined up here. So this particular student had a name, a major, an age, and a GPA. And I gave all of those values. So I assigned this student one an age of 22, a GPA of 3.2, etc. So now what I can actually do is I could print out all of these different values that are stored inside of this structure. So if I wanted, for example, I could like print out the GPA. So I could print out student one dot GPA. And now we're gonna be printing out 3.2. And actually it looks like I have a typo here. This should be student one, not student. All right, so here we're printing out 3.2. So we're printing out the value of the student's GPA. I could also print out like their name. So why don't we do that? student one dot name and now this is going to print out Jim. So you see we print it out over there. So a struct is a really useful structure and another cool thing we can do with structs is we could actually create another student. So I could create like another instance of that student structure. Um, so I'm actually just going to copy all this stuff. I'll show you how we can do this. I'll just come down here and paste it and instead of student one why don't we call this one student two. And we can set this student's age to be like maybe 20, maybe their GPA is a 2.5. Let's say their name is Pam and they're studying art. So now I have a completely different student and if I wanted I could print out this student's attribute. So I could print out like student2.name and now we're gonna get Pam instead of Jim. So you can see how that works right there. So I could create as many of these students as I want. And this is what's cool about structs is I can just define the basic template for a student in my program. And then I can create individual students down here that I can work with. So now I have this like student variable here. I could do whatever I want with it. I could pass it into a function. Um, I could print it out onto the screen. I could use it in something like an if statement. I could do basically anything I want with it. It's it acts a lot like a variable or an array. So remember, variables and arrays are just containers. And we can do just about anything we want with them. And that's the same with a struct. So this has just been kind of a, an introduction. And what you could do as an exercise is think of other things you might want to model in your program. So maybe something like a book or something like a phone. You could model a phone using a struct. You know, basically any type of uh, information you could store using a struct just like this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.